Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to another video from Project IUC. Now in this video, we will be starting off our newest topic, what is Sharia law. In this first video, we will be looking at the introduction to Sharia law. Okay, firstly, we are going to start off by establishing where does this word Sharia comes from and what is the origin? Well, firstly, we can start off by saying that the Sharia is rules and guidances for mankind from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the reason why this is such an imper imperative idea is because from our previous videos we established that Allah in his perfect 99 attributes or names we know that one of them is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim and Al-Hakim. And from this we can explicate that they mean the most merciful, exceedingly merciful, as well as the most wise. Now we can associate these terms again, these three terms from the 99 names of Allah by stating that this Sharia, this rule and guidance for humanity from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually going to be in the best interest. Because from his attributes, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most wise. So his knowledge will encompass all things, meaning that whatever these laws are, they are within the knowledge of his supreme, supreme wisdom. And they are also in the mercy of his exceeding mercy, which means that they are going to be in the best interest of man. Because we established that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows our circumstances, circumstances better than us. So his knowledge and wisdom through his mercy his mercy exceed our our circumstances circumstances and from this we can also say that now the sharia law is the governing body of all muslims and it is dictated from allah so it governs muslims <clears throat> so with this established, let's move on to what this term actually means. So we just established where this term Sharia law comes from and why it's so imperative to know that it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the next thing we're going to do is actually break down this word Sharia and further analyze it to understand its meaning. So firstly, what we're going to do is actually discuss where this term Sharia law comes from. So linguistically, Sharia actually meant a way towards something. Towards something. And the earlier Arabs at the time would use the term Sharia as indicating a pathway towards water. 
Now, this is very important as we can explicate that this meaning of pathway towards water means that the word Sharia itself is actually referring to a pathway towards something important. And when we establish that Sharia comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it further enforces the idea that the Sharia is actually a path or a guidance towards something important. So it's a guidance. rules towards something important and it is the matter which pertains to all of human life Now, we can actually break this down further. So we just said that the Sharia is a pathway, is a pathway to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance. It's a pathway to Allah, inevitably. And from this, we can actually say that this Sharia has two meanings. So number one, we can say that it is the divine decree. divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this de divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala governs all aspects of human life as we previously said anything from theology to morals to character and even to ethics. So inevitably, this Sharia, in the holistic sense, is something that derives from div the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what this means is that they are the rules and they are the set of laws that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to follow in order to succeed. Not only in this life, in this life, but also the next. Now the second meaning that the Sharia Allah has, which is the more conventional meaning that more people or even in the mute or even in the media that focuses on is the jurisprudence aspect. And this inevitably, this inevitably means the law. So the Islamic and Sharia law, which dictates how humans ought to live. And in any Islamic state, Islamic state, which is governed by the Sharia, can implement, implement these laws. So, there's this idea that first of all, this Sharia refers to humanity holistically, meaning that it's the divine decree. So the Sharia is everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do, again, in that pathway. So pathway to Allah, which is the Sharia. And the second one that we just mentioned is the jurisprudence aspect, which is more professional and which and which looks to implement laws from Islam. Now, we're going to focus on the jurisprudence aspect next. So the second aspect. And you see, this term Sharia law in accordance to jurisprudence actually took place three years after the Prophet's death.
after the death of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Excuse me. Alaihi wasallam. And this was because the earlier scholars at the time wanted to sort of get a deeper understanding and a deeper meaning of what the Sharia law means. And they actually said that the Sharia, in accordance to jurisprudence, are precepts in the divine knowledge of Allah. knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which inevitably regulate human life and so in this knowledge you get every single one of the rules regulations restrictions and anything else that would cause destruction to human life to which then these scholars said that this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of ours has an opinion opinion about everything now this can be anything from how to greet someone so greetings how to wash oneself how to enter a home how to enter a home and in this sense that there is no limitations to this divine decree there is no limitations to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for humanity in our aspects. Now let's further analyze this second aspect of jurisprudence or the second aspect of Sharia law which reflects jurisprudence. So we said firstly that Sharia is number one, the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his divine knowledge through his divine knowledge through his divine knowledge that he wants to reflect upon all of humanity all of humanity and the second point that we establish in accordance to what Sharia law is or what this term means is the jurisprudence aspect prudence aspect or the law and from this we said that the earlier scholars of the time in early Islam that they actually wanted to analyze and further further institute these laws properly to the Islamic caliphates. And from this, we actually get this term fiqh. Now what this term fiqh actually means is literally to have a deeper understanding. A deeper understanding. A deeper understanding and to look more closer and closely analyze something. So in this jurisprudence aspect, we get the idea that this term fiqh revolves around this idea of deeply understanding the Sharia and further analyzing its implications and what it actually fundamentally says. And this idea from this idea sorry of fiqh revolved around these earlier scholars contemplating on how to better institute this aspect of jurisprudence and ultimately the sharia which we discussed in the previous slide so again 
The fifth means to have a deeper understanding or a greater human analysis. So a greater human analysis on any topic. And now this is the sophisticated study of Islamic Sharia or Islamic law. So it's the sophisticated study of Sharia is what this word or this word fiqh associates with and from the sophisticated study of Sharia it ultimately dictates justice in any matter so justice in any matter any matter whether that be a crime inheritance tense or any other social economic or political issue political issue so again, just to summarize, we said that Sharia is the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his divine knowledge, which is ultimately for the entirety of humanity. And the second aspect that we said, what Sharia is, is the Jewish prudence, which reflects the law. And then from the second aspect, we understood that these earlier Islamic scholars sought to look for a deeper understanding and analysis of the Sharia, which then we get the term fiqh. And from this fiqh, we said that it is the sophisticated study of Sharia. So number one, we have Sharia as a holistic sense. And number two, we have Sharia as a sophisticated and more detail oriented sense, which is fiqh. So it is the divine ruling of all human life revealed through the Prophet Muhammad. So revealed through Prophet Muhammad. Prophet, peace be upon him. And fiqh is the culmination of critical and deep analysis on the natural divine sharia from God. So the divine decree from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which was revealed through the Prophet peace be upon him and in this divine sharia from God it is to facilitate a just rule in regards to jurisprudence so the whole idea of fiqh is to institute a justice or a just rule over society so now the question arises, how does one properly conceptualize God's philosophy and this decree? So how can we understand it? Understand this properly. So how can we properly understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's philosophy? Obviously, we don't have the facilities and we can't think like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Instead, what we do have are sources of Sharia. So we have sources of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rulings, his path, his Sharia. From which we can explicate and infer through fiqh of what... Uh, let me just make some space over here. So we can explicate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. Wants from us. And these are our sources of Sharia to which we can infer and make proper judgment through this study of fiqh of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants with us in regard in accordance to his path. 
Now let's take a closer look into this idea. So now we established where the Sharia comes from. And we said it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we said that this is important because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all wise. He is all wise. And he is all merciful. And from this we said, through his infinite wisdom and mercy, we said that his sharia is going to be in the best interest. Best interest of mankind. After which, we further analyzed what the word sharia means. And we said that it has two meanings. Number one, we said that it is the divine decree for all of humanity. For all of humanity. And secondly, we said that it's in, in accordance to the jurisprudence aspect of Sharia. Jurisprudence. And we said that from this jurisprudence, to get a better understanding of God's pathway and his decree, we said that the scholars of the earlier times took upon this meaning fiqh. And from the fiqh, we said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sources of the sharia which we can look towards to properly make judgments about his just rule. And of course, these sources are number one. The main source is the Quran. Main source is the Quran. And we've established in previous videos that the Quran is the speech of God, speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is uncreated, uncreated. So of course, this would be our first source of Sharia because it is directly coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the angel Jibreel alayhi salam to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and now the second source of Sharia that we have is the Sunnah and again we established that the Sunnah is from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam peace be upon him Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh, excuse me. Hu alayhi wa sallam. And now this sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him, refers to all the practices that he did throughout his life, his teachings. his actions, his sayings, and his approvals, as well as any other physical description or moral descriptions that we are told through his companions. So again, the Sunnah comes from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they are the practices, teachings, actions, and sayings all culminated through his companions. Through his companions. Now the third source of Sharia is this term called Ijma. Now Ijma actually means a consensus. Consensus. Now, what is it a consensus of? Well, firstly, Ijma refers to the consensus or unanimous agreements amongst credible scholars. Credible scholars of Islam. And now these are scholars, individuals who have spent lifetimes, 
studying the religion of Al-Islam and they have properly analyzed the Sharia, the sources again, the Quran and the Sunnah to dictate and come to consensus about certain judgments of specific things. So they are from credible sources or sorry, credible scholars and it is a consensus. So agreement amongst them amongst them on a specific topic topic now the last thing the last source of sharia is this term called qiyas now qiyas refers to analogy it refers to Islamic analogy which actually means the precedent about a certain ruling so precedent on a topic to which the scholars of the jurisprudence the laws can infer so they can use this precedent or analogy to infer to further develop and further justify a ruling or any judgment so to justify rulings slash judgment And now an example of Qiyas would be the rulings on drugs. on drugs. Obviously, in the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, there weren't any drugs or there weren't specific drugs as there are now. So what actually happened is due to the ruling of wine being harmful, of wine being harmful, the scholars and the lawmakers of Islam at, at the time ruled that drugs were also prohibited as they are used or as they have the same effect as wine and since wine is haram or prohibited drugs were also prohibited that is just one example of what qiyas is and then we can also use this to further explain that the quran number one as well as the sunnah are primary sources as they are direct, direct guidance straight from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger peace be upon him. And then we can say that the ijma over here, the consensus and the qiyas, the analogy are the secondary sources. Secondary sources. And now with that being said, let's move on to what these rulings and these sources actually dictate. What is the point of Sharia? Now the last topic that we're going to cover in accordance to Sharia is what is its purpose? What does the Sharia ultimately hope to accomplish through its rulings? Well, the first thing that it hopes to accomplish is religion or more, more specifically the preservation. Preservation of religion, <clears throat> or we can also call it spirituality. Spirituality. And again, this is the most important factor because we know as Muslims, the most important thing in anybody's life is the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So anything that would go against this will be deemed haram such as not praying because again we want to build onto this connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Muslims <clears throat> now the second thing that the Sharia accomplishes is the preservation of life so the protection of life 
And of course, this is very straightforward as anything that will go against, so anything that will threaten someone's livelihood because everybody has a right to life, threaten life, it will be haram. Will be haram. And a great example of this is in a hadith by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he said, if anyone kills an innocent person, sin person, it is as if they have killed the entirety of mankind. Killed all of humanity. And again, this just sh goes to show how important the preservation of life is in Islam. Now, the third thing that the Sharia protects is lineage. And this means the family tree or the families. name and again this is another reason why in islam it is haram for a woman to change her last name to the man she's married with because this preservation of family is so important as it tells the person their lineage and where they came from ultimately allowing them to know to know where they came from and that's why fornication is haram because it destroys the lineage and one of the main main principles in the sharia is that every single child every child every child has the right has the right to know their parents and where they came from <laughs> now the fourth thing that the Sharia hopes to accomplish and preserve and protect is wealth now by wealth this means the income or source of livelihood And an example of how something may threaten wealth and make it haram is interest. Interest. Because we know that interest is destructive due to due to its and this may be another topic that we may touch on in another video inshallah but for now interest is haram because it destroys a person's income and an example of this would be say if somebody has a car loan car loan and now that loan the interest is built up to an amount so high that the person inevitably will not be able to ever pay off that car loan. And now from that car loan, the person can't pay. Ultimately, ultimately making that person to fall into debt. And when they are in debt, they won't have enough money or a good source of income, again, for their right to life. Because without an income, you have no means of survival and no means to get the necessities you need to survive daily. Now, the last thing that the Sharia protects is honor and dignity. Now, what do we mean by this? Well, firstly, now this honor and dignity, again, what do we mean by this? Well, firstly, it means the preservation preservation 
of someone's status. So in society, the notion of somebody being degraded is very detrimental as it can affect how people will perceive them. Now, an example of this is it's haram for a man and a woman to be alone who aren't in a halal or who aren't permissible to be with, with one another, meaning relatives or somebody you're married to. Now, again, this is, this is true because... People, people may destroy that person's dignity, may destroy their dignity, destroy, dignity, ultimately causing that person to be viewed in society as a horrible person. And again, this can have many, many effects, such as if somebody's seen as a criminal when they're ultimately not a criminal or whatever they did wasn't a criminal act. In society, they may not be able to find a job, which again can affect their wealth, their life, and much more. Now, these are the five things that the Sharia hopes to accomplish and hopes to protect. So, number one, lineage. Number two, life. Oh, sorry. Number one, religion. Number two, life number three lineage number four the wealth and then number five the honor and dignity now again we also have to remember that is that these are ordered one to five as the most important as we've already said religion is the most important as it dictates the connection with allah life is more important because without life you won't be able to do anything lineage again is important because we need to know where we came from and ultimately it allows a person to 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 fundamentally realize where they're from. Wealth again, if we don't have wealth, you won't be able to do anything, right? You won't be able to, you won't be able to have a livelihood. Number 5 is honor and dignity. So these are the five fundamental ideas and fundamental principles that Sharia law hopes to protect and preserve. Now the last thing that we're going to look at is a beautiful verse which ultimately dictates that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen Islam and with the Sharia has chosen us to be the truth for religion. And in the Quran, chapter 5, verse number 3, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, This day I have perfected for you your religion and completed my favor upon you and have approved for you Islam as religion. SubhanAllah. That has been this video, my dearest brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for watching. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.